Welcome to Next Week in Wolfboro. I'm WCTV staff member Adrian filling in this week. We are coming to you from the Wolfboro Community Television Studios, where we bring your community to view. We say thank you to our friends at the Yum Yum Shop for underwriting Next Week in Wolfboro. It is through the support of underwriters and donors like you that programs like this are possible on Wolfboro Community Television. If you would like to underwrite a program for Wolfboro Community Television, please contact our producers at 569-0219. We also want you to let your friends and family from out of town know they can watch this program on YouTube. Once you are logged in, just search for Next Week in Wolfboro and you will find our channel. All right, let's start right out with a report from the Chamber of Commerce. Mrs. DeVries is ready with a report. We're sending it to you, Mrs. DeVries. Hi, and welcome to Next Week in Wolfboro. I'm Mary, I'm standing inside the Information Center located in the former railroad station. And come down and say hi. A reminder that we have the calendar of events, this yellow piece here, and it's available for you to pick up here. We have them in an outdoor rack 24 seven. So just stop by and get your copy if you'd like. Here we go, Saturday the 17th is the Granite Man Triathlon. So maybe you're competing. If not, just keep an eye out on the roads. Uh, there'll be runners and bikers. And then uh, it all starts over at Cary Beach for the swimming uh, piece of that triathlon. So good luck to ev everyone who's in that. Also on the 17th is the now, uh, I think it's the 12th annual Cruise into the Right. And this is at the Wright Museum of World War II. From 9 in the morning on, they'll, they will have, no, I'm sorry, 10 to 2 at the Wright Muse Museum. And there will be music, food, fun, and cars. So maybe you'll go to that on Saturday morning. And looking ahead a little bit, this is a new event for us to benefit Back Bay Hockey. And it is the Howl at the Moon Dueling Pianos. It's going to take place on the 24th of August inside the Pop Whale and Ice and Arts Center and that will be at 7 o'clock in the evening and for more information you can call 569-5639. There are also some wonderful senior programs that are available throughout uh, the year every month including the monthly senior luncheon. If you'd like information on that, again, stop by here, we have it, or give us a call at 569-2200, or call Parks and Rec directly at 569-5639. Every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 o'clock to 4 is the model yacht racing in Back Bay. It's a lot of fun, and the people competing in that water course would love you to stop by and, and watch that. Uh, remember, Saturday night is the concerts in the community bandstand and Wednesday evenings, the Kate Park pickup band, and there's just so much going on every week. Farmer's Market, we have it all in the calendar of events, and we hope that to see you so we can give you a copy. Remember to shop, dine, and have fun in your town. See ya. Here's some other things we would like to share with you, starting with Saturday, August 17th. Great Waters Music have the concert Space Oddity at Castle in the Clouds from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday, August 19th, the Wolfboro Makers Mill have Youth Creator Camp from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday, August 20th, the Wolfboro Public Library provides Toddler Time Story Hour at 10.30 a.m. Advanced sign-up is required. The Wolfboro Planning Board will be meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 7 p.m. If you would like to watch the Planning Board meeting from home, Wolfboro Community Television will be broadcasting this meeting live on Channel 25 and on the WCTV YouTube channel. Wednesday, August 21st. The Wolfboro Public Library provides preschool story hour at 1 p.m. Advanced sign-up is required. The Wolfboro Board of Selectmen will be meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 6.30 p.m. If you would like to watch the Selectmen meeting from home, Wolfboro Community Television will be broadcasting this meeting live on Channel 25 and on WCTV YouTube channel. Thursday, August 22nd. The Wolfboro Farmer's Market is at the Nick from noon to 3.30 p.m. Saturday, August 24th. There will be a Canvas for Kids program at the Wolfboro Makers Mill from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. There is a 21 and older dueling piano concert at the Pop Whale and Ice and Arts Arena from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Great Waters Music have a concert featuring Tomei String Quintet at Brewster Academy at 7.30 p.m. 
Sunday, August 25th. The Wolfboro Makers Mill have their monthly repair cafe from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Monday, August 26th. The Wolfboro Zoning Board have a meeting at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 6 p.m. Tuesday, August 27th. The Wolfboro Public Library provides toddler time story hour at 10.30 a.m. Advanced sign-up is required. Wednesday, August 28th. The Wolfboro Public Library provides preschool story hour at 1 p.m. Advanced sign-up is required. The Wolfboro Public Works Department have a meeting regarding the South Main Street Water Replacement Project at the Wolfboro Town Hall upstairs in the Great Hall at 6 p.m. Thursday, August 29th. The Wolfboro Farmer's Market is at the Nick from noon to 3.30 p.m. Okay, let's send it over to the Parks and Recreation Department. Christine Collins is ready with an update on all things Parks and Rec. We're sending it over to you, Christine Collins. Christine Collins here with Wolfboro Parks and Recreation and just want to share what we have going on. So we're still in summer, but of course, Parks and Rec is always thinking ahead. So we're thinking about fall. So right now we're in the process of getting up our um, field hockey and soccer online. We're thinking about our fall festival. We have, um, Abenaki and Pop Whalen will be opening up. So we're just thinking about the future. So we're a little bit behind the scenes now trying to plan all that. We do, um, we will be posting if we haven't already, uh, looking for people to work at Abenaki and Pop Whalen. So Pop Whalen, it's more for uh, Zamboni drivers and also hot, hot, helping in the office to check people in for public skate and stick practice. And then for Abenaki, it's more mountain operations. Um, so that entails like running the lifts at Abenaki. We also look for people to help with concessions at both facilities. So um, we will have that uh, information online on our website. So you can check out the application and open positions that are available. Uh, so we are in the beginning stages of that so make sure you check that out typically pop whalen opens up i think it's opening up at the end of september this year typically it's the beginning of october so a little bit earlier than usual and abenaki typically is december 26th if we can open early we try to it's really based on the weather uh, we do make our own snow but sometimes mother nature doesn't cooperate um, and we also depend on mother nature to help us out um, in the 15 years I've been here, I think there's only been one year that we've been able to open before December 26th. Um, so unfortunately, because we are surrounded by water, um, it really does impact. Uh, so just so you're aware for snow making for us, it is the temperatures that it's required, but uh, it's also the humidity. So if we have too much humidity in the air, even though we have those temperatures, it doesn't really work. So we have a great crew on that really watches the weather. We're in our in a, we're almost weathermen just for programs and for things that we need to do. We have to keep a close eye on the weather and kind of look for trends and see if we have that two week window available so we can make snow. Uh, but just realize that we're always watching and trying to look if there's capability for us to do it. Other than that, we are working on fall and winter programming, like I said, so as things come up, we will post them on the website, so make sure you're checking for that. Uh, but we are still in summer, even though we are focusing on fall, so we still have um, different programs that we're trying to finish up. And um, unfortunately, we lose a lot of our staff because most of them are college students and high school students. So once that wraps up, it will be back to your core crew at Parks and Rec, and then we start looking to hire that winter staff. But uh, if the beaches are still open, so definitely visit them and we hope to see you soon. All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Christine Collins. Joyce Davis is at the Wolfboro Public Library with an update. We're sending it over to you, Joyce Davis. The library is inviting the public to attend a community conversation on Wednesday, August 21st from 6 to 7 or on Friday, August 23rd from 10 to 11 a.m. The goal of this community conversation is to explore what the library can do to improve services, facilities, and programs for people with disabilities or those requiring additional accommodations. Since the library has been selected to receive the American Library Association Transforming Communities grants in the amount of $10,000, we hope to identify ways the disabled community can better access library resources. The grant will be spent on prioritized needs. Do you need help with your smartphone? 
We'll be offering a four-part sm smartphone workshop on Wednesdays beginning August 21st and continuing August 28th, September 4th, and 11th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Don Campbell, the instructor, will help you maximize your use and enjoyment of your iPhone, whether it's an Android or not. Don will cover a lot of ground, including home screen, settings, voicemail, texting, contact lists, managing apps and photos, and lots more. Please register in advance on our website. Our next book discussion will take place on Tuesday, August 20th at 1 p.m. We'll be discussing Steinbeck's classic novel of Mice and Men. We'll also be showing the 1992 movie version on Friday, August 16th at 1 o'clock. The movie is rated PG and runs about two hours. Join Cornerstone VNA as they introduce a new caregiver cafe to support Wolfboro area family caregivers. This will take place on Thursday, September 26th at 1 o'clock in our Beaver Room. If you are a family caregiver, please come for an afternoon of support, education, and conversation. No need to register in advance. Our mystery book group will meet on Wednesday, August 28th at 11 a.m. We'll be discussing Women with a Gun by New York Times bestselling author Philip Margolin. Margolin transcends his traditional territory in this novel, which is a haunting thriller inspired by an unforgettable photograph. Copies are now available for pickup. Our September 2nd book discussion selection is Middlemarch by George Eliot, thought to be one of the most important books in the English canon. It's a long novel, clocking in at over 800 pages, so pick up a copy soon if you'd like to join us for our September meeting. On Wednesday, September 4th at 6 p.m., author David Reynolds will be with us to talk about his new book, Mirrors of Greatness, Churchill and the Leaders Who Shaped Him. His talk will focus on what we have misunderstood about Churchill. Winston Churchill is one of the most celebrated statesmen of the 20th century, reserved for his role as Britain's wartime leader. He's often seen as a solitary genius, but British historian Reynolds invites us to look more closely at the dark days of 1940 as he offers a novel interpretation of what made Churchill great. David is a professor at Cambridge University and also a regular summer visitor to Wolfboro since the 1970s. Stop in for Genealogy Wednesdays in our Thayer History and Genealogy Room from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can get one-on-one -on -one genealogy help. This will work for beginners, intermediates, and beyond with volunteers from the Lakes Region Genealogy Interest Group. You can learn the fundamentals of genealogy research, get guidance on starting your family history, organizing your documents, finding records, exploring databases, and using genealogy programs such as Family Search and Ancestry. If you're interested, Please call the library for more information and instructions on setting up an appointment with a volunteer. If you're looking to get out of the house for a bit, don't forget we have drop-in cribbage on Mondays at 1.30, Scrabble Fridays at 10.30, and a drop-in Mahjong group on Thursdays at 1. Our summertime story session is now in full swing. Toddler time takes place every Tuesday morning at 10.30 and Preschool Story Hour takes place Wednesdays at 1. Please register in advance on our website. And come and meet Ned Friday, August 30th at 10 a.m. for ages 8 and up. Ned is our new robot. Learn more about ro robotics with Ned. You'll get to program Ned. Register on the website, space is limited, and no prior knowledge of robotics is needed. Thank you, Joyce Davis. Father Cole, Deacon Charlie, and Nathan Ledoux are at St. Catherine Drexel Catholic Church with a report. We're sending it over to you, Father Cole and crew. Uh, Father Bob Cole here with Deacon Charlie for our, for our O and uh, with our seminarian, Nathan Ledoux. Good to have you here, both of you. This is wonderful. And it's Friday morning here now, the 16th. We've just had 
Yesterday we had the holy day of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin, and so now we're getting ready for, uh, for, for, the, for the weekend, uh, and it's really quite exciting to get ready for this weekend. I do mention on Sunday afternoon at noon, from noon until 2, we have what they call the Journey Lunch, and that's for anybody who's lost a loved one. It can be a spouse, a child, a dear friend, and they get together about once a month, uh, and it's not a, it's not a professional counseling service at all. It's people sharing their faith in resurrection, in heaven, uh, as they uh, share how they're doing, uh, going through the, the grieving process and kind of supporting each other. And they have a nice lunch, so uh, you're most welcome to come and join uh, noon to two uh, this uh, this uh, Sunday, this Sunday, and of course our regular schedule Saturdays, Saturday at 4, preceded by confessions at 3, and then Sunday morning 7, 8.30, and 10.30. And then of course we're going to have the, uh, the, the, journey, uh, the journey lunch. So Charlie, what would you like to talk about? I want to talk about the picnic fathers, you know at Camp Bernadette. Uh, if you have never been there, you've got to come and join us for the picnic, but before the picnic, we'll have the group from St. Catherine Drexel in Boston is going to come up and visit us. And Father Ham, if you've never, uh, Father Ham, what's his name? Oscar Pratt. Father Oscar Pratt is going to preach. And if you've never heard him preach, he's fantastic. Uh, and he brings the gospel choir to sing. And if you've never heard the gospel choir sing, you're going to be in for a real treat because they really know how to go with the flow and get people involved in singing and enjoying the Mass from a musical point of view. Uh, and uh, after that, we go over to Camp Bernadette. And if you've never been there, that's a fantastic spot right on the lake there. Uh, and we have all kinds of games for the children to play uh, and um, food, if you've been in their new, new uh, kitchen that's been there for a couple of years. Uh, it's a great spot and they will provide food. And Are we going to have a little uh, fire pit again, Father, this year? I, I think so. Yeah, a little fire pit and they can toast some marshmallows. Uh, and we get to meet the uh, director of the camp. And they do a wonderful job. Again, if you've never been there, they have a rock climbing wall. Yeah. And you know, Father, the story, I got talked into climbing that the first year. Well, it's made for little kids, and the handles are so small. I got halfway up, and I said, let me down, let me down, because I thought I was going to fall. But anyways, we had a lot of fun. They had, I think they had soccer games. They had basketball. There's all kinds of fun things for the kids to do. So if you haven't come, and even if you have come before, come again. And I think you'll enjoy it. And we'll have a beautiful day out on the lake. And we get the, the chapel, right? The chapel. The, the chapel will be there. You can see the chapel they have. Uh, it's just one of the most wonderful things. And what's the story, Father? That camp was bought how many years ago? They thought well, it was... Well, around 1950, 1952, uh, Monsignor Richard Boner founded Camp Fatima in Gilmanton Ironworks for the boys. And he wanted one for the girls, and, and, and he, so he founded Camp Bernadette on Lake Wentworth in, here in Wolfboro, and he bought 50 acres of land wow. on Lake Wentworth for $20,000. What a steal. <laughs> and <laughs> back then, the people were shocked. Can you imagine? They just spent $20,000 <laughs> for, for a camp. Oh. But uh, no, he, he was a, a visionary, very much of a visionary. And there's a sister that works at that camp, isn't there, Father, that works with the girls? There was a sister there. Uh, Is she still there? Not there? Uh, San, San, camp Bernadette. I, I'm not sure if she's there this year. Uh, or not. Yeah. I know the girls loved it. When you talk to little girls, they said it was great because she could talk to them as like almost like a second mom to them. Yeah. Uh, so they get, they get just a beautiful summer together out there. And if you've never been to camp in your life, this is a great time to go see one and see how beautifully it operates. Yeah. Uh, and it, as you say, it's supported by the diocese. Right. So next, that's next Sunday, the 25th. Right. 
uh, 10.30 Mass with Father Oscar Pratt from St. Catherine Drexel in Dorchester, Mass, out of Boston. And then we'll go over from 12 to 4 uh, to Camp Bernadette at Lake Wentworth. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, I'm supposed to take care of the weather. That's my job. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, tell us about uh, the North American College and what, what's happening when you're going back and all. Yeah, so actually this afternoon I'll be leaving uh, to go back to the North American College in Rome. Uh, and that's one of many seminaries around the world, but especially for us uh, in the United States, one of our national seminaries, so men from across the country, uh, are sent by their bishops to study for the priesthood. Uh, and the blessing for myself is that I get to study with men not only from around our country, but from around the world in the universities there in Rome. Uh, so in addition to taking the normal coursework of classes that we have in theology, I'm also doing formation at the seminary, and on Thursday evenings after we have dinner, uh, a light dinner, we go in for a conference uh, to hear on some subject, matter of the faith or science or something that might be of interest or use to our pastoral work in ministry uh, for priesthood uh, in the coming years. And this will happen over the course of many years, so I'll be entering what's called my third year of theology. So. God willing, next year I'll be ordained a deacon, and then the year after to the priesthood. Uh, and this is also the time of year, around this time of August or so, when seminarians or men in formation for priesthood return to their seminaries around the country in the U.S. as well. So this is also to ask you to pray for uh, the men who are in formation to be priests, because the Holy Spirit is, is leading uh, us uh, and these other men around our country uh, the, the will of God be done, and that his church continue, and that we raise up new priests to carry on the mission of Christ on earth. So to pray for your seminarians and, and ask the Lord to send out more, uh, more uh, men into his vineyard to serve the church as priests and deacons and religious, because we really do need it, uh, especially in these times. Well, we're delighted to have you here in the parish with us at St. Catherine Drexel. Now, I know there are different universities, colleges that you study at. You live at the North American College, but you go out. What, what college are you studying at? So I'm at the Pontifical Gregorian University, which is administered by the Jesuit Fathers. Uh, so there's actually quite a few American Jesuits who are there. In fact, the current rector or the president of the university I attend is an American Jesuit priest, Father Mark Lewis, wonderful man. So uh, we're very blessed. And I know you're within walking distance of the Vatican. That's right. The, the college that I live in, the North American College, is about a five to seven minute walk from St. Peter's Square. Uh, so we're in the heart of Rome, the heart of the church. Do you get down and see the Pope every now and then? Yep, I can actually hear him from the rooftop of the college on Sundays when he gives his Angelus from the window. We can hear him from his window. So if I'm not feeling up to walking out or the weather's not so nice, I can stand on the roof and listen to Pope Francis give the Angelus. Uh, and it's nice to have visitors, too, so if you're ever in Rome, uh, or you know somebody coming to Rome, tell them to visit pnac.org, and there's a little tab on our college's website called Visiting Rome, and you can contact the seminary or the U.S. Bishop's Office through that to get tickets to a papal audience, or to get a tour of St. Peter's or the Scavi, the excavations underneath St. Peter's Basilica. So we can certainly help you find your way around the Eternal City if you're ever there. Yeah. Now, are you picking up Italian? Yes. Yeah, I would say passively. I get about 95% of what's being said. And then <coughs> speaking is a little bit harder. So I'm actually going back early, earlier than most of my classmates, to do another two weeks uh, of Italian language study. So I'll hopefully be a little more fluent speaking uh, now going into my third year, so uh, I, I think exciting. it's fabulous to meet people from every state in our, in our country, every mm -hmm. diocese. You know, they can send them there, and, and it's just exciting. So we're delighted. Uh, so, you're, so you're heading off here Friday night. You're gonna fly Friday night. You'll be there. Friday night. Yep. Be there this weekend. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, I'm so jealous <laughs> of food over there. I mean, this guy's going to enjoy the food. I wish I was going just for the meals. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know that's great over there. You just, you're never hungry over there, right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> the thing I notice about uh, in, in, in Rome, uh, they have these wonderful meals. They have the, the, the wine, the vino. There's nobody fat. 
There's no, there's no big fat. I'm really, you would think they would be fat, and, 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 but they're not. And I, I don't know, it's because it's, it's the Mediterranean diet or because they walk a lot. I don't know what it is. I, my parents tell me the secret is the olive oil, Father. The olive oil. The olive oil is the, the basis of that Mediterranean diet. Okay. It prevents you from putting on too much weight. All right, well. I must go down and buy some immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we got we've got this weekend, uh, and then next weekend is the big picnic, uh, and and uh, the, on the twenty fifth, uh, and come to the ten thirty mass if you'd like to experience, if you really like to experience a a Catholic liturgy, Father Oscar Pratt, and then join us from twelve to four at at Lake Wentworth, and bon voyageio. Grazie. All right. Grazie a tutti. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Father Cole, Deacon Charlie, and Nathan Ledoux. And thank you for turning into our weekly program. Remember, there is always something to do in and around Wolfboro. If you would like to add an event to our program, please contact Wolfboro Community Television Station at 569-0219 or send an email to wctv25 at gmail.com. We hope to see you out and about, and we look forward to seeing you next week. With clear eyes and full hearts, I am Adrian for Wolfboro Community Television. <laughs> Bringing your community to view.